you cannot deny that they had a deal and the conditions of that deal were very clear. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Liana if you're new and welcome to episode 28 of Makeup and Mythology, a series on my channel where I do my makeup and also tell you an ancient myth. So last week we covered the Inuit sea goddess Sedna and how the men in her life did her dirty and how she became a goddess and the mother of several different species of marine animals. So this week we are revisiting Indonesian mythology. Uh, the last Indonesian myth that I covered was that of Dewi Sri in episode 12. This time we are covering a Javanese folktale called Timun Mas, which translates to the golden cucumber. Thanks so much to Nugraha for the suggestion. Let's get started. Once upon a time, a long time ago, in Java, there was a widow named Mbok Srini. She was very poor and very lonely, and she lived in a small house at the edge of the jungle. She wanted more than anything to have a child, so she prayed and prayed each and every night to the gods to bless her with a baby. She was probably really isolated. She was living in the corner of the jungle all by herself. You know, she was a widow. She probably didn't want to get remarried. She was probably infertile. Maybe she was too old to give birth at this point. I don't know. There are lots of good reasons as to why she couldn't just go out and get a baby. Um, we don't know. We weren't there. So she prayed. And one night she had a dream that there was a little bundle under a very specific tree in the jungle. When she woke up, she took this as an answer to her prayer and ventured out to the jungle to find it. And just like she expected, there was a bundle in the jungle. Ooh, that kind of rhymed. But when she grabbed it and looked inside, plot twist, there was not a baby. There were only a few cucumber seeds. Suddenly, out of nowhere, she heard very loud, monstrous laughter. <laughs> she spun around to see a gigantic green giant who said his name was Buto Ijo, which literally translates to green giant. I wonder if the produce brand Green Giant got their name from this. As we all know, their celery is allegedly always filthy. We don't stand. So this big green motherfucker is just laughing and she's like, why are you laughing? I'm literally so not amused right now. I'm like so confused. Why are there cucumber seeds? Where's my baby? And he responded, just plant the seeds around your house. You will have a child. You must nurture and take care of this child. But here's the kicker. You can't keep it. Once it's all grown up, you have to give it to me to eat. You're literally telling me you cannot find anything else to eat in this great big jungle. Nothing, nothing else to eat. And now you're messing with this poor woman who really wants a baby and you're telling her you want to eat it? Also, isn't he kind of sounding like Rumpelstiltskin a bit? I'm getting Rumpelstiltskin vibes from this. Well, anyway, Mbok Srini was really desperate for a child, so she kind of just ignored the part where he said he wanted to eat it, and she was like, good deal. He was like, plant these seeds and you will have a baby. And she was like, enough said. I'm not going to listen anymore. My ear holes are closed. That is good enough for me. You don't have to keep talking. Nobody can tell me anything at this point. Honestly, not a great deal. But she was like, hell yeah, it's a great deal. It was not a great deal. So Mbok Srini went back home and planted the cucumber seeds around her house. Some time passed and a great big golden cucumber came out of the ground. When she cut it open, a beautiful baby girl was inside it. Of course, the girl is gorgeous. Under no circumstance shall a baby that comes out of a plant in a mystical folktale be hideous. Imagine, Mbok Srini cut open the golden cucumber and inside was a hideous, ugly baby. <laughs> no. That would make for a really interesting story, though. So Mbok Srini took the beautiful baby girl and called her Timun Mas, which means golden cucumber. Timun Mas grew up to be a very kind, loving, and hardworking girl, always doing the most to take care of her aging mother. Many years passed, and in the year that Timun Mas was going to turn 17, the green giant Buto Ijo appeared and reminded Mbok Srini of her promise. He's like, hey, remember me? I'm gonna come back in a week and I'm gonna collect the kid. It's time. I mean, as hard as you may try to paint Buto Ijo as a bad guy. I mean, yeah, he eats children, but, but you cannot deny that they had a deal and the conditions of that deal were very clear. He was 100% transparent about it. He was like, yeah, you want a baby? I want to eat. So, hey, I have a way for both of us to be happy. You can have a baby and when it's not a baby anymore, I'm going to come and eat. And he even had the decency to come one week before the due date to remind her, like, Come on, he didn't even have to do that. Even Rumpelstiltskin, he told the girl in that story that he'd help her spin straw into gold in exchange for her first child. The conditions of that deal were very, very clear. And then he even gave her a loophole to get out of it by guessing his name, like, hello? He didn't even have to do that. The moral of the story is don't make deals unless you can pay the price. But wait, we're not done yet. It's still a little early for the moral. <laughs> so yeah, of course, neither Rumpelstiltskin nor Buto Ijo are the main characters of their stories. They are the villains. So I think we can guess how this turns out, which sucks for them. Well, in real 
real life, there are no villains and heroes. Nothing is black and white. But this story isn't real life, is it? On the other hand, though, in a lot of folktales and myths, there tends to be the whole hero and villain dynamic because they're more than just stories and aren't really meant to be taken as is. And what I mean by this is that typically the villains in these stories tend to represent a greater evil. And based on the research that I did for this video, Buto Ijo represents greed and being a predator of children. So of course, those are bad things. And the hero typically represents something good. In this case, Mbak Srini and Timun Mas represent the strength of love and family. Same in the story of Rumpelstiltskin. So technically, heroes and villains aren't really supposed to be seen as people more than they're supposed to be seen as representing a greater sense of good versus evil. Of course, in a real life scenario, if you sign a contract, no matter what the contract says, you're the one who signed it and you should be responsible. But this is not real life. This is a folktale. So let's see how Mbak Sunini gets out of this one. But before we do, I just want to mention real quick, going way back to episode six, where I talked about Perseus and the slaying of Medusa. In that story, Medusa was the villain and Perseus was the hero. If you haven't seen that episode, basically I was super mad about what happened to Medusa because she was really just minding her own business. And then Athena just fucking turned her into a monster because she felt like it basically. But the thing is, Medusa's story was supposed to represent what would happen to you if you disrespected the gods in any way. And back then in ancient times, disrespecting the gods was a very, very, very bad thing to do. So people came up with these myths to scare other people into believing the same things that they did. Somebody got really mad at me for saying Medusa deserved better because they thought it was hella disrespectful. But you know what? Even in this context where the villain of the story is supposed to represent something evil, Medusa still didn't do anything. She literally would have left everybody alone and would have just stayed in her cave and like hung out with her sisters. I mean, yeah, she killed a bunch of people, but that's because those people were looking for her. They went to where she lived. The only evil that Medusa represents is disrespecting the gods and I feel like she didn't even do that. She pretty much just existed and then Athena decided she was hella mad so I stand by my opinion that Medusa deserved better. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. So going back to our story, Mbak Srini, the woman who promised to let a giant green bitch eat her daughter, is just like hella sad and scared because obviously she doesn't want her daughter to be eaten. So she's like, oh shit, I probably should have thought about that before I made a deal with this giant green bitch 17 years ago, but it's too late now. So I have to think of a way to get out of this one. So she heard that there was a powerful Rishi, which is a holy Hindu sage or saint that lived in a nearby mountain. So she was like, okay, I'm gonna go talk to him and see if there's anything that he can do to help me. So she went looking for him and found his mountain abode. And she was like, hey, so 17 years ago, I fucked up really bad and I just really wanted a kid and I just promised this giant green dude that I would like grow his food for him and like now his food is my baby and I don't wanna give her up, I don't want him to eat her. And now he's gonna come eat her and I don't know what to do. Ah. So the Risha was like, all right, I'm actually touched by your loving mother-daughter bond, so I'm gonna help you. I can never do eyeliner and speak at the same time, oh my gosh. He gave her four small bags of cloth, each with something different inside. Inside the bags were cucumber seeds, needles, salts, and tarasi, which is shrimp paste. The Rishi then told Mbak Srini to give these to Timun Mas and tell her to throw them behind her when she is being chased by the giant. So on the girl's 17th birthday, Buto Ijo appeared at Mbak Srini's house and was like, hey, I'm here to collect the payment. Except he probably wasn't super chill like that. He was waiting 17 years for his dinner. He must be really hangry. Gotta play it a little scary. I really gotta feed into the whole bad guy representing evil thing. Hey, I'm here to collect the payment. There, I think that was slightly better. So at this point, Mbak Srini turned to her daughter and was like, run, my daughter, run. Oh boy, I hope Timun Mas has done a lot of cardio because if that were me, I would have just been like, oh, I have to run? Just, just let him eat me. Forget it. Timun Mas thankfully had a will to live and also athleticism, and she ran as fast as she could to escape the giant. Buto Ijo was hella mad, understandably, and he destroyed Mbak Sirini's house while chasing Timun Mas. Because he was a giant and she was just a girl, he managed to catch up to her pretty quickly. And at this point, she opened up one of her four cloth bags, the one with the cucumber seeds, and scattered them behind her. Good thing she remembered to bring them, otherwise this would have been a much shorter story. So the cucumber seeds were magic, surprise, surprise, and suddenly a very large cucumber vine appeared and strangled the giant, trapping him so that he couldn't move. This allowed Timun Mas time to escape. However, the giant managed to break free from the vine and caught up to her again, and this time she opened her second bag and spread needles behind her. The needles transformed into a sharp, prickly bamboo forest that wounded the giant badly. I guess he was really, really hungry because even after that, he got up and continued chasing her. If I had to put in that much effort just to eat 
and he caught up to her once again. She opened her third bag and spread the salts behind her. Suddenly, a sea appeared, and the giant was engulfed in the waves. But he knew how to swim, so he got out of that as well and caught up to her once more. Down to the last bag, Timun Mas desperately threw the shrimp paste behind her and continued to run. The Tarasi shrimp paste transformed into a sea of boiling lava, and this was what finally got him. Butso Ijo got stuck inside the boiling hot volcanic mud, and he drowned and died. Okay, but imagine if the shrimp paste wasn't magical and she threw it last expecting it to transform into something. But it was just shrimp paste, like, take this! But then nothing happens, she just wastes perfectly good shrimp paste. So it sounds like to me that she probably could have just started out with throwing the magical shrimp paste and this would be a much shorter story. But I like that there were four different bags of things. This way the story wasn't too easy, you know? Sometimes it's just too easy. And also it shows resilience and willingness to keep trying and go about something a different way if something doesn't work. I think that's another good takeaway. Try different things until something works very applicable. So Timun Mas survived and returned back home to Mbaksrini and they lived happily ever after for the rest of their days. Very wholesome. We've got another happy ending today. We're done with the story and my lash glue hasn't even dried. What? I'm getting better at pacing myself. So that is it for today. I really enjoyed this one and I hope you did too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!